Hey guys, uh, happy Monday, January the uh, 4th, 2021, 2021, there you go, our first Monday of the new year, um, coming at you from uh, the uh, the bedroom that is now my uh, my office at home, set up with a computer and a dedicated workspace. Uh, took the bed out of there. Now I got my own little place and my, my wife is, uh, my wife doesn't have to put up with my stuff all on the kitchen table every, everywhere, which is a good thing for her sanity and mine. And, uh, I even got to set up my own record player. Kind of fun. Listening to some records yesterday while I was working. Um, today we are in Psalm 58 as we enter a new work week and as we enter a new time when, um, we are in the middle of a, a winter without Christmas to look forward to in in a month or two. And uh, now, not that our hope was just in this holiday called Christmas, but um, sometimes it's nice to have something to look forward to. Well, here's something to look forward to, okay? An extra minute or two of daylight every day from now on. It was a 351 sunset on... Um, something like 3.51 for sunset on December 21st, and now it's uh, after 4 o'clock. So I ask my phone, it's fun, what time is sunset? Let's see here. Hey Siri, what time is sunset today? Hey Siri, what time is sunset today? I can't help but that if you turn on precise location for Siri and dictation. That's my iPad, my phone's charging. Never mind. Anyway folks, there's always something to look forward to. Spring is coming. My prediction, I, I don't know if I'm going to be right, but I don't think Mara Lake's going to freeze this year, which I'm okay with that because I really uh, like it when it doesn't freeze because then I don't have to wait for the ice to come off the lake. Um, but yeah, it's it's been an interesting winter and uh, Jesus is going to get us through the rest of it. So Psalm 58 verse 1, David is talking about justice. Justice. Do you rulers know the meaning of the word? Do you judge the people fairly? No, you plot injustice in your hearts. You spread violence throughout the land. These wicked people are born sinners. Even from birth, they have lied and gone their own way. So David is obviously uh, writing to a specific situation where there's some rulers that are very um, evil and the way that they're acting is horrible. And uh, they spit venom like deadly snakes. They are cobras that refuse to listen. So David's talking about people that um, have venom in their blood. Um, probably bitterness, contempt, people that uh, have gone their own way and people that you can't trust. They, they lie all the time. The, he's dealing with men that, remember they're living in a world with, with no police. And uh, David may be king in Israel, but he knows there's a bunch of people that are um, evil that are all around him and even someone within, some people from within his own circles that have gone um, completely over to sin and uh, they're ignoring the tunes. Get this, okay? This is an interesting picture, okay? These people spit venom like deadly snakes. They're like cobras that refuse to listen they ignore even the tunes of the snake charmers, no matter how skillfully they play. What is David getting at here? He's saying that these people are, are so wrecked with sin that they're powerless to stop sin. Um, nobody can stop their sin. Nobody can help them. And this is, this is something about the human condition. When men um, give themselves completely to evil, humans are powerless to stop sin by themselves, no matter what the skill level is of the writer of a self-help book, no matter what the skill level is of somebody that is a life coach or somebody that's written a, um, a seminar about how to change um, your behavior, behavior modification with people doesn't work when they've completely got a heart inside them that's dead. And we are powerless to stop sin by ourselves. Um, God described sin to Cain um, in this way, he says, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Well, how do we master sin? Well, we've got to um, 
break off the fangs of sin. And, and this is what God, where God comes in. This is where prayer comes in, okay? David is saying, Lord, break sin's fangs, O God. Smash the jaws of these lions, O Lord. Um, prayer is the only thing that will disarm sin because we can't do it. Uh, we can't get rid of sin ourselves. Um, only God can defang sin. And that's that picture that God gives Cain. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you. It's, it's an animal. And that's why sin turns people into animals. And only God's power can break that spirit of sin. And going to him and saying, Lord, please disarm this power that's at work in so many people's lives. And in my own life, Lord, I don't want, I know sometimes folks, I can tell when sin is croaching at my door. And it's only because I've been a Christian as long as I have that I start to, now I can recognize when sin's croaching at my door. And I know it desires to have me and I've got to master it. Um, and going to God in prayer and saying, Lord, master it, beat it, defang it, smash its teeth. Lord, I don't want this power to be controlling me that's controlling so many people in the world. Um, and he's saying, Lord, may evil disappear like water into thirsty ground. Um, may their weapons be useless in their hands against me. Um, may they be like snails that dissolve into slime, <laughs> like a stillborn child who will never see the sun. He's saying, Lord, I don't even want sin to have a foothold in my life. I don't want sinful men to be able to hurt me or control me. Um, you see, you got to keep your eyes on God and go to him when you're confronted with evil, whether it's coming at you from within your own heart. I am my own worst enemy most times, or whether it's coming from the outside and there's attacks coming in. Got to remember God, verse nine, God will sweep evil away. He'll sweep them away, both old and young, faster than a pot heats over burning thorns. Basically deal with sin. Get God to deal with it within you and with others and go to him. We, Because folks, we know the right way and we want to live in the right way. We want to be people that are not going to cave. It's only a matter of time till justice catches up with us if we remain in evil. And um, humans cannot sin with impunity. If we don't deal with it, we will hit the wall of truth. And this is disconcerting for people that a, keep sinning. It's disconcerting to know that punishment is coming. But it's comforting for those who go to God for mercy. And this is where verse 10 comes in. The godly will rejoice when they see injustice avenged. They will wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. And what this is saying is that, that wickedness is on a limited timeline. It's going down. And we will see... We will rejoice when we see evil completely fall. It will be a good day when God's justice falls. And then at last, everyone will say, there's truly a reward for those who live for God. Surely there is a God who judges justly here on earth. Bottom line is that we know God is good. Justice will prevail. He will come and set things right. And it may not look like we're on the winning side when we follow him now, but we are. And it's delayed gratification knowing that justice is coming and we will be on the right side of history. We cling to this hope. We cling to God's mercy. We go to him now and say, Lord, I want my sin gone. Forgive me. Give me a new heart. Help me not to sin. Help me never to cave in evil like so many have. Lord, I'm no better than them. I know that I need your grace. Come to Jesus, get right with him now. Well, you still can. Because if you don't get right with him now, justice will get right with you when he comes back or when you die. And um, I, wanna, I wanna bring up something that's been very disturbing to me the last couple of weeks. Um, a man who uh, um, has been instrumental in many people's lives, Ravi Zacharias, since his death in May to cancer, um, it, it would seem from all the evidence, from the, the investigations that he caved in to the animal crouching at his door and uh, engaged in, in a lot of sexual sin and uh, even predatory uh, um, sin that 
took advantage of somebody who is broken. And, uh, and, and folks, it shows us that none of us, even the most intelligent, brilliant man who is uh, defending the faith, um, being able to um, bring God's truth into debates and on the world stage, he caved in to the animal of sin crouching at his door. And uh, none of us are immune. And we need to come to God now for mercy every day because we can't do this on our own. But the good news is, if you come to him humbly now and say, Lord, I need forgiveness. Lord, I want to get right with you. Lord, I want to live for you. Lord, I want to be in your hands, in your safety net. There's truly a reward for those who live for God. And surely we will one day see there is a God who judges justly here on the earth. So come to him. Come to him now. Don't try and live life without Jesus anymore. Get him to give you a heart transplant, one that beats in time with his truth. And, uh, and remember, today he is with you and he's got you. And that's why we go to him in prayer. But that's our safety net. So let's have a prayer right now um, and bury your heart before God. Open it up. Lord, all of us are feeling different things as we enter this week. We all have challenges ahead of us. We all need your grace. We all need your mercy, Jesus. We stand in humility before you this morning, knowing that we don't have it all together, that none of us are immune. I'm not immune to it, Lord. None of us are. We pray that you bolster our faith and uh, help us to take up the shield of faith to um, extinguish the darts, the flaming darts of the evil one who's launching them at us. Help us, Lord, to be um, in touch with you, to realize when sin is crouching at our door. And we pray, Lord, that we will be strong, that, Lord, you will give us grace to avoid sin. Lead us not into temptation. Lord, deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. And we want to be part of that kingdom, Jesus. And we pray, Lord, your will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven and in our lives, Lord, today, as we want you to be our king. Lord, bless these people and give them your, your grace and your wisdom. Make them shine brightly for you. Lord, uh, make us like the moon, reflecting your light in the darkness. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. Love you guys. Um, if you have prayer requests, please let me know what those are. Please pray for me this week as I teach an evangelism course out at Miller. Pray for the, the college. They've gone through a hard time losing one of their own, um, Kyle, who uh, passed away during the Christmas break. And pray I can bring the encouragement of Jesus to the students. And, and uh, as the, these that study to be uh, men and women of God will have his grace and strength. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope it's 7. And uh, God bless you. Have a great day. I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> I was counting on it. <laughs> My son, they've run out of wine. Mother, my time has not yet come. If not now, when? Father. It has begun. What has? 
Miracles. Signs and wonders. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You have experienced a miracle, Mary. I saw him. It was incredible. Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The man has a following. He's a rogue who answers to no one. You asked me before if I knew his name. Now everyone knows his name and I fear for his safety. Throw this down for a catch. Do you think that impossible things can happen? That overturn the laws of nature? <laughs> that cannot be explained. Rise. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. This is different. Get used to different. My whole life, I have wondered if I would see this day. Follow me, Nicodemus, and you'll see more. God loves the world in this way. He gave his only son. I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> I was counting on it. Anything is possible now. Don't you see? Let's go. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Hey, it's Dallas and the creator of The Chosen, and yes, season one of The Chosen is complete. All eight episodes, they're available right now. You can look up The Chosen in the App Store or Google Play, and we're easy to find. You can download it and be watching within minutes. And in fact, it's unprecedented technology. You can connect to almost any device you have directly, and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you'll check out season one of The Chosen right now.